And now we have an update on our Growing in Grace mission program. So I'd like you to first welcome Reverend Chris Mockmer with us. Great to be here. It's, it's a great program that we have. And these ministers are working very hard. Yeah. And they network together and they get this gospel out. And even if for some reason we can't get literature to one minister, another minister always seems to step in and help them get literature. Yeah, and you know, we're reaching places that really are almost unreachable. We're going to share one today, Nepal. That is a place that is very hard to reach. Yes, it's, I think it's like 75% of the country is mountainous. Yeah, you know, and, so. and their, their you know, technology is very limited being in those mountains. And it's just, it's hard to maintain a connection with them. But thank God we do have a pastor there we're working with. Yes, and... And, and they are working hard. Yep. Well, I do have the first one, and it actually is a new minister, a new evangelist, and his name is Ja uh, Enyan Pan from Painesville, Liberia. And here he is. Uh, Pastor Ja first contacted us on Facebook in September of 2021 to learn more about the ministry. He was looking for a Bible-believing church. We explained our beliefs according to the Word of God, and he writes to us, and he says, I am grateful to have a ministry like this. I accept what you believe, and we are the same. I want your ministry to come to Liberia. I love the way that the ministry worships. How can I get sermons on my phone to watch? We explained to him that he could watch the ministry on our YouTube channel. He was so thankful to be able to watch sermons on his phone. He let us know that he was not interested in movies or entertainment. He wanted to keep his mind filled with the Word of God, so he asked us to link him to our radio station, and he was interested in our online courses, and he actually registered to take some. The radio and the online courses helped him in his ministry, and he loved to learn more from learn more from the teachings. Unfortunately, while for a while we did lose contact, by the grace of God, he later reconnected with us, and Pastor Jaw requested that gospel literature be distributed in his country. He also emailed us the request of material on water baptism and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He wanted the people in his country to receive and grow from the gospel literature. We shipped him literature, literature to him from our contact in Ghana, Evangelist Ansa. So Evangelist Ansa was able to get him literature. And he writes, Thanks be to God for the highest of our partners, to send us literature, gospel literature, I bless God for what he is doing in my life and ministry. Appreciation goes to our partners in Ernest Angley Ministries. And you can see these pictures here. And a member of his church also contacted us and let us know that he received the book Prosperity. And it has blessed him and also helped him. And then another evangelist, that Pastor Jaw reached out to, contacted us about the books that he received. So he wrote us and he said, hello, the family of Ernest Angley Ministry, I am evangelist Michael Johnson from Liberia. I received some of your books, Prosperity and the Deceit of Lucifer from Pastor Jaw from Liberia, West Africa. I am thankful to Ernest Angley Ministries for these powerful books that make me and my church members grow daily. God bless you. The gospel literature has already touched many lives in his area. He is always excited about uh, joining the live streams and he loves to be with us whenever possible. He is working together, working together his uh, members to watch the live stream with him. So he's bringing them all together so they can watch the live stream with him. And he requests that, he, that we keep Liberia in prayers. So, you know, like me and Reverend Kristen, pretty much every service that we have with an update on our Growing a Grace program, we always like to encourage all our partners to 
pray for the ministers. Indeed, and it's great because every Sunday morning we have so many of these pastors joining us live for service. And it's easier Sunday morning because their time is ahead. Yes, yes. And, you know, every, every Sunday morning, multiple pastors from anywhere from 12 to 15 different countries are joining us for service, yes, and, and that's believe, great. Yeah, and I believe today we had collectively around 200 people. Yeah, from 15 so, different nations. Yes. So it's great the way they're, we're coming together to worship the Lord. Okay, our next update is Pastor Paul Alauso from Lagos, Nigeria. And Pastor Alauso, uh, he is doing a lot of evangelistic work. God is opening doors for different venues, and he acknowledges the Lord. Uh, because it's through this Growing in Grace mission program that God is giving him this grace. And so his team is growing as they continue to do more and more evangelistic work. And recently we told you how Pastor Alausu would have an opportunity to be in a special youth program. And they sent this organization conducting it sent this message to Pastor Alausu. We have a mandate to reach out to teenagers and young adults from society. We see that you also have a vision for our youth to be grounded in the Lord. So this organization was taking note of the work that he was doing and they requested him to come. So we were able to give Pastor Alouso 100 Bibles as well as literature for close to a thousand young people that would be at the event. And Pastor Alouso was able to address them, speak to them, as well as give them literature. And this event, really it was centering on young people's lives, that they would serve the Lord and stay out of the world. And many of them in this meeting surrendered their hearts to the Lord and Pastor Alouso and his team were able to distribute the giant little books and magazines, as you're seeing there. And there were a hundred young people that were chosen to be mentored, and they were given a Bible from this ministry. So a hundred Bibles were distributed. And as you can see, the literature was well received. The young people were really into the literature. Uh, and it was just a great, great blessing, a blessed time. And we also at the ministry received a welcome or a thank you letter from this organization for the literature and the Bibles. And it reads to Ernest Angley Ministries, we want to thank you, your organization, for the support we received during our program, which was held on March 9th, 2024. We are most glad that we share the same burning desire to impact the lives of teenagers and young people in this country. The program was a huge success as the lives of those teens were imparted with morals, values, and most importantly, the salvation of their souls. Once again, we thank you very much for your support for the success of this program. And we pray that God Almighty will replenish you in multiple ways and keep moving your organization from glory to glory. So it was a great success. And even this organization was willing to, to let, let us know about it and thank us for participating in the way we did. So from the beginning of the year now, Pastor Alauso and his team have done a lot of evangelistic work. They've reached into different states of Nigeria, including Osun, Undo, Ogun, and Enugu, as well as the city of Abaji. And he and his workers, they've gone from town to town within each state. So it's been a lot of work, a lot of sacrificing. And he let us know our team held outreaches at four different locations spanning 12 days. We are continuing to propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ. And again, these ministers, they have the zeal because now they have the tools. And so they're ready and willing to go forth and evangelize. And also what they do in many of their meetings is they'll have Bible plays, Bible drama, and they share it with those in attendance in their meetings, and this helps just bring the Word of God to life to people. And many of them are responding in prayer and receiving salvation. 
as well as the literature. And he let us know we can feel your prayers as the Lord makes these outreaches smooth and very rewarding with souls yielding to the gospel of Christ. We have enjoyed special grace with these outreaches. And at this time, we want to show you a slideshow of the different work that's being done by Pastor Alauso and his team in these outreaches in the different states of Nigeria. We sincerely appreciate the opportunities provided by the Growing in Grace Mission program. We have been empowered as a result to become resolute in the spread of the gospel. We started by covering four communities in different towns of Oshun State of Nigeria, namely Ileife, Oshogbo, Ilesha, and Ikenu. In all these places, we held not less than four outreaches in four different locations. These are very ancient and historical locations in Nigeria, and most of these places have very strong ties to idol worship and traditional worship. Ileife, for example, is said to be source home of the Yoruba tribe and very strong in idol worship. Oshogbo is also the worship center of Oshun, the river goddess, and people come from all over the world to worship her annually. However, our outreaches in these places saw souls being won to the kingdom in their numbers. We also had simultaneous outreaches in Oshun and Ogun State in the past weeks. While a team was busy winning souls in Oshun, another team was busy winning souls in, in far away Ogun State. It was indeed the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. We sincerely pray for the blessings of God upon every one who is a supporter of this uh, Growing in Grace Mission program, and we pray that God will bless and replenish you in numerous folds. God bless you. Amen. Shed his blood for you. Look at Jesus and be made whole. Stretch forth your hand. Only you can mend. Stretch forth your hand, Lord, 
It's great to see how many people, you know, praying and receiving Jesus and, you know, being able to see, receive a Bible or, or a piece of literature. And that, what to me is so great about it is so many of our pastors in this program, you know, they're organizing, they're coming together, forming teams, and they're going out to evangelize. And not just anywhere, they want to go so many of them where they haven't been reached. You know, whether it's the Maasai tribe, whether it's here, Paul, you know, Alawuso, he's taken his team into cities and regions where it's idol worship and they're, they're worshiping a river goddess and people like this need the gospel. Yes, it's, it's where the need is. You know, the Holy Spirit's leading them to where the need is and they recognize that there's a great need in these di different areas. So, you know, and it's like, early before that song even started that he was thanking all our partners for giving you know this literature and helping to change these people's lives so that they can grow in the Lord after they accept Jesus I mean so many of these people know nothing of Jesus probably never heard of Jesus and here they're being reached yes yes it was wonderful to see every I mean so many of them praying and bowing their heads well, I do have an update, and it's from uh, Carlos Boni, uh, excuse me, Boeni, and from Maputo, uh, Mozambique. And uh, let's see, um, we want to give a brief recap to Pastor Carlos. Here he is. He was he found out about our ministry through a crusade in Mozambique. Since that time, his life has never been the same. And I love what he writes here, so I want you to, to listen to this. The year Reverend Angeli came to Mozambique, God changed my life. I was very young at the time and saw a light in Reverend. When he prayed for all of us, I felt the energy in my body. I said to myself, I want to be like this man. He prayed for my for many sick people and were healed in the name of Jesus. I never stopped looking for the God of Reverend Angley. I love that. And the church, a church invited him to come to visit and he shared the gospel literature with those who could understand English and you can see this is the church here that he was invited to they were grateful for the literature and sent a special thank you to the ministry and he traveled to Eswatini which is formerly Swaziland I believe Swaziland. they switched the name in in April of 2018 and to share English literature touching many with the material Anytime God brings a soul across his path, he's ready to share the gospel with them. He has a zeal for souls, and he wants to touch his church to be, teach his church to be soul winners. And he writes to us and says, Your prayers and your books makes me closer to God. Even now I am fasting and praying. I want to, uh, to copy your way of spreading the gospel and rescue souls. Even now I am training young people to go to the streets. We provided him with, a, with personal uh, soul winning notes that Reverend Angeli used to teach in his class. And souls, and excuse me, and they, he shared it with the young people that he's training. And he appreciates the help and wants uh, to use this information to help them. Since Portuguese is widely spoken there, we are working on sending him the Portuguese tracks that he and those he is training can use for evangelism. So we recognize that there is a need for these tracks that we have in Portuguese, and we're, we're going to get them to him so that he can use those and he can reproduce those and you know, touch many souls in his country. And it's good. Again, he's another one. He, he's learning how 
we do. And he's patterned after other Growing in Grace pastors. He, he's, you know, getting the young together. Yes, he's getting a team. his team. And that's great to see them doing that. Well, our next update is Pastor Samuel Masangwa from Jinja, Uganda. And here's Pastor Samuel. And God has been giving Pastor Samuel favor. And he's been able to visit more and more prisons. He let us know, I am engaged in prison ministry in eastern Uganda. Many have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Unfortunately, the laws don't allow us to take pictures. Through your prayers, the government allowed me to visit all the prisons in eastern Uganda. And Pastor Weary helped us send the Bibles and the literature to Pastor Samuel. So another example of networking. And the Bibles were in English, as well as the Luganda language. And he shared a Luganda Bible with the officer in charge at the Kibuku prison. And here's a picture there. The literature was shared with the inmates and has been a blessing to them. He gave us a report. We have many testimonies from the prison ministry. At the Kibuku prison, 197 prisoners have given their lives to Jesus Christ. 28 of them have already been released. Some had capital offenses. Reading the testimonials and literature from Ernest Angley Ministries has helped them to grow spiritually mature and enabled God to do miracles in their lives. And some of them have joined our prison ministry. So that's great that some of the fruit of his ministry has joined and is going to work with him. With Pastor Weary working with Pastor Samuel now, we have a lot of prisons that are being covered throughout Uganda. So that's wonderful. Also, recently, Pastor Samuel visited the Bethel Orphanage Center and distributed literature there. And here's the children there. Many of these children have come through difficult circumstances. And so the messages in the magazines give them hope, and it's really helping the children. Now, Pastor Samuel was also, after having this visit, he returned to check on their progress, and he found that they were doing very well. And the director was so grateful for the visit that the director actually requested some Bibles. So we're glad that these pastors, they're visiting places, and then they do follow-up visits to see how it's going. And Pastor Samuel left us with this, praise God, I am grateful for the opportunity and gift of life God has given us and enabled us to reach the unreached souls. Yes, it is, it is wonderful when, you know, you follow up because mm -hmm. that's yeah. when they, they will have questions, you know, they're digging deeper into the Word of God and that's right. they'll be right there to answer them. And, you know, a lot of, all of us, you know, when, we're, when we were babes in Christ, we had questions. Yes. So it's, it's very important to follow up. And we find that with uh, Pastor Peter and Degwa. Mm -hmm. He goes back into the prisons and he, he makes sure that, you know, if anybody has any questions or has a need or, you know, needs prayer or, or whatever their need may be, he's right there. So it's, it's key to follow up. And that's what these ministers are doing. They're, they're getting their team, but they're also following up. Yep. So it's great how uh, the ministers are all working together. Uh, Ashley, I'd like to give you an update, and this is Pastor Kieran and uh, Pastor Samuel of Nepal. Now, this is husband and wife, and this is their team. I mean, this is, there is Pastor Kieran and Pastor uh, Samuel, and they're married. So we were able to share this update with our congregation, as most of you know that we're there here uh, a while back, but now we want to share it with our live stream audience. So it will be a blessing to those who've already seen this report, just to refresh your mind, re refresh your memory, but it'll also be a blessing for those who are watching the first time on this live stream. The Lord help Pastor Kieran and her husband, Pastor Samuel, in their work in Nepal over this past year. Okay, so Nepal is a country in Asia located along the southern Himalaya mountains. It contains some of the world's most rugged and difficult mountain terrain. Roughly 75% is 
is covered by mountains, it remains one of the least developed and impoverished countries in the world. It is a, there is a very small percent of them that are Christians. And because of the remote areas where some of the people live, many of them have never had an opportunity to even hear the gospel. And this is what Reverend Chris and myself were talking about just a little bit ago, how, you know, these mountains of Nepal and these different pockets, people will live there, but they never had an opportunity to hear, hear the gospel at all. Yeah. And that's what makes this husband and wife team so special mm -hmm. that they're willing to travel this rugged terrain to get to certain area, areas, certain little villages on the mountains, in the mountains. So this is a wonderful opportunity that we have to, you know, team up with them. And Pastor Kieran was born in Nepal and raised in another religion. At the age of seven, her father passed away. And she and her brothers and sisters were put into an orphanage. When she was nine, she accepted Christ at this orphanage and received her first Bible. Her friends and her family perse persecuted her, though. But she stood for the Lord, and later her mother and brothers accepted Jesus. And she started the gospel fellowship with her mother. She moved to India and continued her education and, became, and received a degree in theology. She lived there for three years and was thinking on staying there permanently. But the Holy Spirit dealt with her to move back to Nepal in 2018. The Gospel Fellowship continued to grow. Her mom encouraged her to remember her calling and God would provide despite all the difficulties they were having to face. God has given Pastor Karen uh, and Pastor Samuel a great burden for the people in the mountains of Nepal. They are working together in the harvest fields, and the Lord has been giving them favor. And you can see them there. Uh, God is using them to travel to remote areas and teach people who have very little understanding of the purpose of Jesus. And those are some beautiful mountains, but, you know, that is a rugged terrain. And many are receiving salvation. So you can see them all gathered there on the side of the mountain. And, you know, they're able to pray with the people, introduce Jesus to them. And we actually have a video of their journey of them crossing the mountain that we'd like to show you at this time. We're going to cross that bridge. So there's is my wife, Kiran. And it's going to take 20 minutes from here. And from here to there, after we cross the bridge, we're going to climb up the whole mountains. Hello, friends. Finally, we arrived on this mountain. We cross all those mountains and finally we arrived here and we are sharing gospel in this place, this place and uh, it's a very wonderful time and many of are coming to Christ and converting and uh, our team is working hard. So I want you to pray for this place, these tribal groups, they are very, you know, they don't know the purpose of life. And they don't know about Jesus. And we are sharing gospel here. And you can see, very difficult to cross those mountains by walk. And I'm so tired. And, but you know, the love of God make us more strong and more fit and energetic <laughs> here. So, I'm going now. See you, bye. Those were some big mountains, but they have a great love for the Lord, and, you know, they, they recognize the need. And yes. you can see even those uh, houses were on the side of the mountain. Yeah, and it's great that they allowed us permission to share it on the live stream, because before they didn't. But again, since we've been working together, they've recognized how God has blessed, and, you know, God's grace is with them in this, and so you know, emboldened in the Lord. They wanted this to go forth on the live stream now to encourage others, and, and that's great. But it is, it's a great sacrifice. You think about it. Yes. You know, 
the organizing, the planning, the supplies you need to go, the sacrificing just for one visit, but they want to make in the future multiple visits to take literature and to take Bibles sponsored by you donators to people who've never been reached with the gospel. So you know it's the final hour because the Holy Spirit is raising up people willing to make that sacrifice to reach the unreached. And can, and can you imagine, you know, you're, those were some big mountains just to try to put on your backpack and, and have whatever you're going to, you know, sleep and, you know, all Food. your, yeah, your need. Yep. But they're carrying literature there. Okay, they're carrying Bibles, they're carrying books, they're carrying literature to pass out when they get there. So they're making a big sacrifice. Sometimes you have to realize that, what am I gonna put in my backpack? More Bibles and less food. You know, that's the decisions that they have to make. But they're trusting in God, they're trusting in the weather that they make sure that, you know, they don't get trapped or do anything. You know, there's a lot going on here that I don't think people realize what they have to go through. And yes, they were hesitant at first to show this on the live stream, but God moved on them and they knew that, you know, it was important for certain people to see, you know, the sacrifice that they're making and the love. And I'm sure this will encourage other ministers to put forth an effort to make that sacrifice, mm. to travel farther out, to win souls for the Lord. I mean, I, I know it would encourage me. Because you look at that journey they made, just remember they have to go back home and make that same journey again. So it, it's quite a sacrifice. And, and like I said, they're planning more of these in the future. And, and there's one other thing I want to add is, you know, if I lived on the side of that mountain and I knew who came and how far they came to deliver a message to me, I would certainly listen to that message. And, you know, yeah. I'm sure they had the, those people's attention. Oh, no doubt, because I'm sure they don't get too many visitors right. as it is. Well, the, their journey was worth it that you just saw. They spent time to get to know the people there, talk to them about Jesus, and many were ready to see, receive salvation. And in this next video, we're going to show you members of the Musar tribe. And that's who these people are, the Musar tribe receiving salvation. फिर वापस आने का फिर वापस आने का वादा किया है वादा किया है मैं उस पे मैं उस पे विश्वास करता हूं विश्वास करता हूं आप मेरे पापों के लिए आप मेरे पापों के लिए मरे थे मरे थे और That's wonderful. Yeah, and, and you know those little children now they can be raised in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they'll have the Bible, they can learn. You know, in the future, will, it, will a church be established there? You never know what God can do. The seed has been planted. It'll be watered, and God will give the increase. Now, the Lord has opened up this, this unique door to get the gospel in such a remote area of the world. And on this journey, it was reported to us that over 50 people gave their hearts to the Lord. And some of these new converts were even baptized in water. And we've also... We're able to provide Pastor Kieran more Bibles in their local language, and there they are being baptized. Uh, and they're going to share, they're going to take more trips and share these Bibles with new converts, souls that they reach on their journeys. Uh, and so here they are showing them being baptized, and that's great, showing their sincerity in their conversion. Now, we have also completed several of our ministry tracks in the Nepali language, and this was a task to get done. But thanks to Pastor Kieran and her help, we were able to translate the tracks in the, in the Nepali language. And here, that track you just saw was, Have You Been Born Again? And now she can print these tracks where she's at 
and take them on her journeys and distribute them. And she notes that these are excellent evangelistic tools, these tracks. And so we're going to, in the future, we're going to have more updates on their work as they continue to take these journeys. Now, again, these journeys takes a lot of planning, a lot of sacrificing. So when we get the literature, when we, or the pictures and the videos, you know, we'll be able to share with you then the work that was done, including the Bible distribution. And at this time, we have an evangelism, evangelism Bible distribution slideshow. and uh, growing in grace mission uh, we are here in blaze and uh, these are Haru tribes and we just distributed uh, bibles here and uh, they are very happy and they are very thankful to you and uh, it's a uh, you know the bible is very expensive for them but because of uh, you know god provided uh, through you and we able to provide them and they are uh, very excited to uh, uh, read the bible and learn from it and thank you so much thank you very much That's wonderful. It looks like pretty much all of them got a Bible. Yeah. And, and like we said earlier, make sure you pray for the ministers. 
You know, mm -hmm. these ministers, they make a great sacrifice. You know, Pastor Karen and Pastor uh, Samuel, they make that journey. Weather can hinder them. There's a lot of things that can go wrong, but God is with them. So it's very important that we do pray. And I know many of you don't know when they're heading off on their journey to go to a different location to be a witness or, or maybe they're in Nigeria and they're, they have to go through, you know, certain areas where there may be people that may want to hinder them or hurt them or, or they may have to risk their lives or, or maybe they're in India where, where you know, that they're, that they're just totally of a different religion and, and they want to hurt that person. So, you know, they're, they're making sacrifices. That's why it's important to pray every day for them. You know, wake up in the morning, you know, pray for our growing and grace ministers and let God know to ask God to protect them and thank right. the Lord for this program. So yes. it, it is a big and blessing. keep giving for the yes. program. Cause yes, you, you see what the sacrifices that they're making, but we want to thank you, all of you, and that's what they relay to all of you is thank you for the sacrifice that you're making because like she said, you know, Mo the Bible is very expensive to those people in that village there. So for them to receive a Bible, for them to learn about Jesus, for them to grow in the Lord, what a great opportunity. I, you know, how, you know, think about it. That tribe or that village, their life was changed just that day, you know, from them right. witnessing to them and giving them Bibles. So uh, we'd like to thank all of you that sponsored this program. What a blessing to have you support this program. Friend, this has been a, been a wonderful day, you know, Palm Sunday, touching souls, you know, hearing about what others are doing for Jesus. Well, we'd like to give you an opportunity right now for you to receive Jesus Christ in your heart. All you have to do is pray and mean it from your heart. Say these words with me now and say, Oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. But I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Live for him daily. Come to church, be a blessing to others, and tell others about Jesus. Now, those of you that need prayer, you know, I'd like to encourage you right now you know, to put your hand against your screen. This is a point of contact against my hand. I'm a believer. Reverend Chris Mockham is a believer. There's many believers in this sanctuary, and let the Lord move for you right now. Break your bondage and set you free, whatever your need may be. Lord, Heavenly Father, just heal them spiritually, physically, and financially in the blood name of Jesus. Let them receive all that you have for them. Bless them and keep them and let them be a blessing. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And let everything come to normal in their body. Amen. Friend, look for every sign of improvement and always give God the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything that he is doing in your life. And now at this time, those of you that are in the sanctuary, I'd like to encourage you, if you need prayer, you can go to my left and your right, and I'll be over there in just a little bit to minister to you. And the rest of you, I'd like to encourage you to come this way to receive more power from on high. Those of you that just accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, your blood washed, but now it's time to become spirit-filled by receiving the Holy Spirit into your body. Friend, all you have to do is just glorify Jesus, and as you're glorifying Jesus, sending one glory right after the other up to heaven, let the Holy Spirit come on in, take over your tongue, and speak in a heavenly language. That is the first evidence, just like in the Bible. The first initial evidence of speaking in tongues by letting the Holy Spirit take over your tongue and speak in a heavenly language. At this time, I'm going to call down a great anointing upon you to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
Lord, Heavenly Father, I call down this great anointing upon the people. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And just start praising them, friend. Glorifying Jesus. Glorifying the King. Lifting up those praises from your heart to heaven. Glorifying Jesus. Yes, just yielding on over. Let the Holy Spirit come on in. Yes, just yielding on over to that love. Yielding on over to that grace. Glorifying Jesus. Glorifying the King, lifting up those praises, just you and Jesus, just you and Jesus, praise in Jesus, love in Jesus, love in Jesus. Praising the Lord, praising Jesus, praising the Lord, praising Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Cause Jesus prayed. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. And through it all, glory to Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. To see oh, bless each one, dear Jesus. That every oh, trial I face is drawing me Where all sins are washed away And let go, and let go 